Here is your latest African news. South Sudan. South Sudan names a woman to head parliament. Gemma Nunu Kumba, the incumbent secretary general of the ruling party, will become the first woman to preside over the parliament of South Sudan, the world's youngest country. She will be responsible for the implementation of the peace agreement. President Salva Kiir, who is also chairman of the Sudan People's Liberation Movement, announced on Friday afternoon that Ms. Kumba had been appointed to head a newly reconstructed parliament. The announcement draw, drew applause and cheers from the audience. Ms. Kumba takes the helm of an assembly in which nearly 40% of its members are formerly members of Mr. Makar's rebel party, the SPLM. Io. The vice president, who has not yet been named, will also come from that particular party. Kier called on the new president and SPLM members to focus on implementing the peace agreement, many aspects of which have yet to be implemented. Somalia. Somalia postpones long delayed elections. Somalia has postponed elections that were due to start on Sunday after months of delays in the deeply unstable Horn of Africa country. Indirect parliamentary and presidential polls were due to open on July the 25th, with four days of voting for the upper house by state delegates. The election cycle was due to end with a presidential poll on October the 10th. According to the federal government's spokesman, Mohammed Ibrahim Moalimu, the delay was due to the fact that Federal regions were neither able to submit candidates' lists in time, nor to form local committees to cast the ballots. Somalia's political leaders finally agreed last month on a voting timetable after months and months of stalemate that turned violent at times. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone Parliament votes to abolish the death penalty. Sierra Leone's parliament voted unanimously on Friday to repeal the death penalty more than two decades after the West African country carried out its last execution. President Julius Mahdi Bio is expected to soon sign the bill into law, which will make Sierra Leone the 23rd African country to abolish capital punishment. The bill also gives judges additional discretion when issuing sentences, which opponents of capital punishment are saying is particularly important in cases where the person convicted is a victim of sexual abuse. Sierra Leone has observed a moratorium on execution since 1998, but prisoners sentenced to death still live a separate, separately from other inmates, which activists say is actually quite dehumanizing. South Africa. Chemicals in a burnt South African warehouse caused considerable environmental damage. South African authorities said on Friday around 1,600 chemicals had been stored at a warehouse of India's UPL Limited when it was raised during violent looting in KwaZulu-Natal last week, causing potentially harmful air emissions and a greenish-tinged effluent to seep into Umtlanga's protected lagoon. The warehouse was one of the hundreds of businesses attacked and looted in KZN and Gauteng provinces in some of the worst violence in the post-apartheid era. Sparked by the jailing of former President Jacob Zuma on July the 7th for contempt of court. The nature of the chemicals are said to be highly, highly hazardous and shouldn't have been disposed of at the landfill sites without prior consent. The government has confirmed that the damage is quite considerable and is going to take some time to deal with completely. The spill, besides being a danger to marine life, it has also threatened biodiversity and freshwater systems in the area. And as a result, several beaches have been closed. Zimbabwe. Chinese in massive looting Zimbabwe's minerals. Chief Chiweshe. A traditional leader in Mashonaland Central Province has, in a rare show of bravery, stood up and accused Chinese nationals in Zimbabwe of being behind massive looting of the country mineral resources. Chief Chiweshe, born Matthew Chitema Muswe, also accused the Chinese nationals of abusing the role, of the role China played in the liberation struggle for an independent Zimbabwe to take Zimbabwe for granted and loot its vast mineral resources, including chrome and gold. 
He was speaking to journalists on Saturday after a media tour of Mavurodona Wilderness. The traditional leader questioned how a Chinese mining company, Afrosheen, had been allowed by the government to mine chrome ore in the belly of the iconic heritage site. The world-renowned Mavuradona is a World Heritage Site nominee, and the local community view it as a sacred place where their ancestors and spirits reside. However, Muzarabani Rural District Council has been accused of receiving orders from people in Harare to ensure the Chinese have their way in the district. Tanzania. Tanzania's big win. Sell us to stay on World Heritage Sites list. The World Heritage Site, the World Heritage Center and the International Union for Conservation of Nature had proposed Celus's delisting. Delegates at the virtual 44th session of the committee put up a spirited opposition that resulted in an amendment on the original draft. The Celus Game Reserve, with an area of 54,600 square kilometers, was first established in 1922 and added to the list of endangered World Heritage Sites in 2014. The delegation directed Tanzania to address the concerns raised and report by December the 1st. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Visit our YouTube channel Tunacheki to watch our weekly news reports and our website at tunacheki.tv for all the latest news updates. You can directly support this news series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a patron. And remember, Africa is watching and please feel free to leave your suggestions news tips or topics about africa that you'd like us to explore